Is that on your phone? On my phone? Oh, yeah, you need to see it? In yeah. Of these? You, want, you need the whole thing? Yeah, so are you single? And I had a little bit of anxiety, I gotta be honest, before I went to the continent because as a black American, we're so far removed from that culture, from anything on the continent. In today's video, I'm going to be interviewing a black American who relocated from America, United States of America to Kenya or Africa. This kind of video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let's start the video. Can you make me go? I can subscribe. So, hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kemuto Bear, and today I have a guest with me. Special guest. Very special guest. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself. Okay, everybody, <laughs> this is your guy, Jay Focus, reminding you to stay focused. Uh -huh. You want me to do the whole introduction? Yes. Yeah, like okay, so yeah. I'm a traveler first and foremost. That's uh, my niche in the whole space and you can find me on my channel at J-A-Y spelled out focus F-O-C-U-S-E-D mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube on Instagram everywhere you want to find people you're gonna find me at J-A-Y focus and it's gonna slide in underneath here she's gonna make it look all smooth <laughs> <laughs> so what's your content about? my content is it's about life it's about being a young American abroad it's about dating, it's about cultural issues, it's about, um, you know, just that perspective and seeing and doing activities, many different things. I like to have a lot of guests on and do interviews. Mm -hmm. So it's not just hearing me talk, but actually going to the source and having somebody, um, you know, push back against my own opinions and my own perspective. Yeah. I really like that exchange that you can have when you meet someone from a different culture. Yeah, very true, uh -huh. that's true. So, how was your childhood background? <laughs> Getting deep into it. I feel like I'm in the psychologist chair right now. <laughs> so tell me about your mother. Yeah. So my childhood background was, I think, more or less standard American, even though that doesn't really exist. I mean, what is a standard American? But I had a mother and a father, and they both tried their best to raise me as well as they could. They tried to give me really good values and made me see the world with open eyes. Mm -hmm. My father, he lived overseas uh, before he met my mother. Mm -hmm. So he told me those stories since I was small and my mom, she mm -hmm. didn't really uh, travel as much, but she just always was open to the world. Many of her best friends were from other cultures, mm -hmm. other parts of the world. So from a young age, I was always um, exposed to that. Oh, okay. So what's your ethnicity? <laughs> ethnicity, yes. ethnicity. So, uh -huh. um, which is considered OG African American. I'm uh -huh. not. Um, Foundation of Black. Yeah, America. I mean, some people use that term. There's other terms, ADOS and whatnot, and you know, uh -huh. those terms can be a little bit politically charged. So, oh, I'm not going um, to throw myself away. and label myself anything like that. But I would just say African that American. I consider myself OG African American. Uh, my, my, both my parents are from the states. My oh. grandparents are from the states. My great grandparents mm -hmm. are from the states. So, you know. You can follow that uh, that trail as much as you want to. Yeah. So, are you single? Yes, at the moment I am single. Okay. So, how many countries have you traveled to? How many countries? Yeah, in Africa. In Africa. So, yes. at this moment, I think I'm at ten countries. Ten countries. I'm at nine or ten, and you know that's a good question because I wanted to add this that yeah. if you follow my channel, currently I'm embarking on a one-year journey around the African continent. So, mm -hmm. I'm not going to take any vacations outside of Africa. It's not going to be like six months and then I'm going to go back to the States for a month or I'm going to go to Brazil. Like, no, I will be in Africa, you know, Lord willing, inshallah, uh -huh. I will be here 365 days, maybe even longer. <laughs> but in one year, I hope to see at least 20 countries, at least 20. Also, in each it country, could be more. you are spending like a month. More or less. More so, or of less. course, like if I'm in a smaller country, like if I'm in Comoros, for example, you yeah. know, that little country in the yeah. Indian Ocean, I don't know what I could do soon, there for you know? a whole month, right? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, for example, in Nairobi and Kenya in general, because mm -hmm. I was in Kisumu before oh, I came here. Yeah, I was. Okay. So, yeah, in, in uh, Kenya, I'm going to stay for a month. Uh -huh. I was in uh, some other countries. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. You're going to see everywhere that I've been. 
and right now I'm coming up to three months on the continent. So what's, what was your first African country? Ever or in this trip? In Africa. Ever. Ever, yeah. Ever, like ever, The first ever, country ever. you landed okay. in in Africa. So the very first country that I landed into in Africa was several years ago, okay. and that was Ethiopia. And I know that's a very... You know, uh, you look Ethiopian. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very surprising place for, for like a black American to visit for the Why? first time. Because typically, um, we usually go where there's well, already West a lot Africa. of black Americans. Yeah. So Ghana, there's already a lot of us. Yes. Um, I think a lot of us are in um, Kenya Gambia. as well, Gambia yeah. as well. You know, English speaking places, places oh, that okay. the culture isn't so different so from, different. you know, an English speaking American culture. Oh, but okay. I went like completely opposite. I went somewhere where they speak Amharic. I went somewhere, um, you How know, just you almost as far away as you can go. How did you manage to, with the language barrier? It was, uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. So in the capital, if you're in Addis, yeah. most people who are young, they're going to speak English oh, yeah, to a pretty true. good level because, mm -hmm. you know, Amharic is in an international language, so they have to study. So, you know, yeah. it's different when like you go to a French speaking country like Senegal. Mm -hmm. They don't need English to live a like, like a life. But if you go to a country where, you know, the main language is, um, it's not speaking anywhere else, then yeah, you, like if you go to Korea, right, they have to learn something other than Korean yeah. or J Japanese or something mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, in the capital, you won't have that many problems with language. Mm -hmm. But when you get outside of the capital and you just want to deal with common folk in the street, in the markets, that's when English isn't going to get you very far. Okay, so like why did you choose Ethiopia first? So it was many reasons. At the time, I was living in Europe, right? Okay. So I was looking at what flights were cheap okay. and direct because I didn't yeah. want to stop anywhere. Yeah. And they actually had um, a direct flight from Madrid, from Spain, uh -huh. going to Ethiopia. Uh -huh. And so I was like, and the price was right. It was just like God sent that to me. Everything lined up at the same time. And I said, you yeah. know, this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh -huh. And I had a little bit of anxiety, I got to be honest, before I went to the continent because as a black American, we're so far removed from that culture, from anything on the continent. Mm -hmm. And 99% of what we hear is negativity, right? That's sad. And I don't know if you're aware, but in the <laughs> States, the communities of Africans and African Americans, they don't always get along. Especially Nigeria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah, yeah. because I'm um, so. And so it's getting better, <laughs> of course. Fiction. But yeah, back in the day, it was really bad. So, That's so you, sad. you go there with all these preconceptions, right? Yeah. And all this, uh, all this background noise. Yeah. But I just kind of, um, you know, focused and said, I'm going to be as open as possible and hopefully I will be received as openly as I am uh, presenting myself to the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was receiving exactly what I put out. People were very um, kind, they showed me around, mm -hmm. they were very helpful. Uh, it felt very warm and welcoming. Mm -hmm. And because that initial African experience was so warm, yeah. it made me say, okay, and now I have to see more. I have to see everything now. So you have already content about Ethiopia on your channel? You know what, it's I actually don't. Well, it's coming up, it's coming up. So I, I told you, this was, when I first went to yeah. Ethiopia, this is before I had a channel. Okay. So I was not actively filming any of my experiences. Mm -hmm. So because of that, um, I don't have anything from that initial trip, but I'm planning on going back. Yeah. So oh, I, I've okay. had um, some Ethiopians on my channel yeah. uh, just in the last couple of weeks. And yeah. you know, we talked about it and me saying that like, hey, yeah. we're gonna all you know, reunite there and mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna see it with fresh eyes and I'll be able to compare from my first trip to now, okay. uh, just like Kenya. So I've actually been to Kenya before. You have been? Yeah, wow, yeah, my, my, nice. actually my, my most popular video it's at so this time is, I did one about Kenya versus Uganda. Oh. Did you see that one? No. You should check that one out. Yeah. I think you'll like it. I've checked your channel like last month, so I'm okay. catching up, yeah. For sure. Yes. So in that video, um, you know, obviously I compare both countries, yeah. but that was so many years ago. So now I'm gonna do a fresh version yeah. and say like, what is it like in 2023, uh, Uganda versus uh, Kenya. You know, Kenya? So There's a lot stay of tuned change. for that, Kenyans, if y'all want to see how, <laughs> how it's going to go down, and Ugandans as well. Stay tuned for that one. It's what's coming your, very soon. What's your first impression about Kenya? Mm. Uh, so my first impression is things work very well. Things work very well. So if you're coming from the States or other countries that are similar, you're used to being able to just hop in an Uber, being able to speak English yeah, with them, true. them showing up on time, them not getting lost, um, really everything being smooth. 
And this is something that isn't always the case in other countries. I'm not going to say any names, <laughs> but in a lot of other countries, that, like something as simple as that can be very uh, stressful, time consuming, uh, yeah. and it can go all the way wrong. Yeah. So that was my first impression when I got here is that that went right. Now I will say this, Yeah. I will say this, in Kisumu, it did not work. Yeah. So, so in Kisumu, <laughs> they were trying to hustle me like crazy. Like here in Nairobi, they respect the price, you know. They, yeah, and then people are fast. Like, yeah, fast. they were trying to hustle me. Like I would, I would book a place. I mean, you know, I would reserve the, the car and say, hey, I want to go from here to here. Uh-huh. They would, they would take 10 minutes to even move their car. I would be looking at the map. The car wouldn't even move. It would take 10 minutes. They would call me up. They'd say, hey, I'd say, what's up? And they say, how about we make another deal? <gasps> they say, the gas price is so high. How about you pay this amount? And I'm like, seriously, bro. If I it wanted to, to, I wanted to do that, I could have just walked in front of taxi, right? <laughs> yeah, I could have saved true. ten minutes of waiting yes. here. Like, what was the point of the app if I'm just gonna argue? Yeah, you know, true. if I'm gonna negotiate. So, yeah. so yeah. Uh, what would you change about America life if you could? Oh man, you're getting deep. <laughs> you got deep questions, no softball questions. So, if I could change something about life in the states. I would say, I would wish that people were more empathetic. So people were able to relate more to the situation of someone who's not like them. You know, oh, so okay. if you're a 40 year old white guy and you're blue collar, mm -hmm. for you to be able to relate a little bit to a 20 year old black student, for example, or a Chinese immigrant is able to relate to uh, a business owner from Mexico, like this thing. I feel like a lot of times people operate in a sense of Indeed, their community you, you know so yeah. it's like if you're not part of my tribe whatever that tribe is mm -hmm. then you're an outsider mm -hmm. and I feel like America wasn't like this you know 30 yeah, years ago 40 years ago where it was kind of like okay we come from different backgrounds we all have different cultures on some level but we're all bound to the, the fact that we're all Americans we all um, respect this nation we all um, want to see everyone uh, be successful because in the, at the end of the day um, the rest of the world is competing against us so we should be working together to compete against the rest of the world and I feel like that got lost uh, in the last couple generations mm -hmm. I'm talking about working what do you do for a living what do I do for a living yes. uh, at You're the moment YouTuber. the moment I'm a youtuber you know so I travel <laughs> for a living to, yeah. to be uh, quite frank yeah I'm, I'm in Africa 24 7 I told you guys so I'm yeah. moving around this continent, I'm doing consultations. If you're coming out to Africa, you want some advice, you want to save some time, you want your experience to be a lot smoother, mm. uh, hit, <laughs> holla at your boy, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, email address. Oh, I leave yeah, yeah. the email address. Yeah, yeah, it's screen. going to be all under uh, the same thing, under my IG or on my website or my, uh, my YouTube channel. So, If you, you could live out. anywhere, where would it be? If I could live anywhere, yes. where would it be? Man, I can live anywhere. <laughs> any, any, anywhere. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's places that I, I know too. for sure uh -huh. I would like to spend more time in, like maybe a month or two. I don't know if I necessarily want to live there, uh -huh. but I feel like I need to go back to Japan at one point in time. I don't, oh. I don't think I want to live there, but yeah. just to go there, have some really cool adventures, have some really good content. Yeah. I think two months in Japan would be uh, awesome. But of course, like I said, I'm focused on Africa for now, but that's in the distant future. Mm -hmm. I would like to go there and uh, you know, really get deep into the culture. So like when you started traveling, what was your first country worldwide? Like, My first country, so yeah, being from the America. States, yeah. being from the States, most people's first country is very nearby. Oh, okay. So if you're a black American, most of them, Dominica? their first trip is the Caribbean, like yeah. maybe Jamaica. Usually it's a family trip oh, okay. from the people that I know. Like yes. maybe they'll go to Barbados, Bahamas, something mm -hmm. like that. But me, I was unique. I went to Mexico oh, because okay. Mexico, it's if you're in California, oh. it's very close. You can get oh, okay. in a car or not even a car. You can take a, oh. a trolley. There's uh -huh. a trolley um, from the border town of San Diego that will oh. take you into Mexico in like 20 minutes. And where is Texas? I thought Texas. Texas is also near Mexico. Yeah, Texas is also near Mexico, but... But in another side of Mexico. Exactly, exactly. Oh. On the Gulf, like where the, um, you know, where the, the sea is. It's oh, on the okay. opposite side. Yeah, not on the Pacific. So I saw your video on Pan-African Channel. 
when you get a girlfriend in one country and you move on to the next country, do you drop the girlfriend in that country oh, and wow. get a new one? Oh wow! Absolutely. <laughs> about you, that uh, like saying the difference about the between African and Afro. Oh, the Afro Latino yeah, versus yeah, yeah, Africans. Yeah. So, have you ever dated either of them? Of course, yeah. I, I mean, I African. couldn't speak about it. Like, one thing about me is, yeah, if it's something speak. that I don't know about, I won't even open my mouth. I'll just say, you know, I'm not the guy. Yeah. But um, if it's a topic you hear me speaking about, that means that I, I have personal experience there. Yeah. yeah. So, what's the. Oh, okay. You guys go and watch that video. Yeah, you guys can check can that video out. It again. It's on Ken Ganda channel. Yeah, I'll link it down below. It's very, yeah, there yeah. you go. There yes. you go. <laughs> what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear in yeah. travel, in life, in, in what? life. My biggest fear or in, in traveling, life. let's say traveling. So my <laughs> <laughs> I guess my biggest fear in traveling would be to be in a legal situation. You know, something that isn't my fault but I got wrapped That's into. Yeah. That would be I mean, nobody wants to deal with those problems in their home country. So yeah. even imagine in a whole another country where you got to deal with the embassy and all kind of things. I mean, mm -hmm. thank God I've never even lost my passport overseas. I've never even lost that. So, um, so far I've been staying out of trouble and I hope it stays that way. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about traveling? Oh man, my favorite thing about traveling so much. Or YouTube. I'll say the fact that uh, what is true in one place isn't true in another place. Uh -huh. And you can interpret that in many different ways. Uh -huh. So for example, in some cultures, the way I'm wearing my hair would be offensive to certain people, right? To maybe a lot of people. And then I could go somewhere else and, you know, everybody's like, oh, that's really cool. I like how you got your hair and that kind of a thing. So it's, it's the fact that you see that whatever your small worldview is, it's just that. It's not all encompassing. So I feel like just the fact that I get to learn every day and I get to experience new things, that's my favorite thing about travel. That's nice. So the culture, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm gonna go deep now. <laughs> Let's do it. We are, I thought we were already saw, going deep. I saw like on your topic, uh, one one like title the thing like what the passport pros are not telling us ah yeah 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 um, <laughs> so that was a, a a a nice interview i had that was with a a gentleman who was also had a youtube channel yeah. uh, his name is foreign strategies mm -hmm. if you want to look him up he actually lived in brazil for a long time right so he's got a lot of perspective i've been in brazil more than once but i never lived there so he was speaking a lot about um, the fact that many people go to Brazil and they think it's like heaven on earth. They think it's paradise. Yeah. And of course you should still go there. I would never tell anyone not to go. But I feel like you need to have that balance where you're, you're keeping it a hundred. You're telling people the good, the bad, yeah, and the ugly. ugly. I feel like c uh, certain people, you know, because it's marketable, <laughs> because <laughs> they're making true. money, they just want to tell you the good, the good. and they want to overhype the good. And they leave out so many details. So. It's very rare to have somebody give you that straight talk and that's what that video was about, to really break oh. down uh, some of the misconceptions and uh, the fallacies mm -hmm. about Passport Bros in Brazil and just in general, mm -hmm. what that lifestyle really is about. That's nice. What is it with uh, people going to Brazil? What is it? What is, what is it with the black men going to Brazil? What is the appeal? Is yeah, that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> So I can't speak for myself because uh -huh. I've said this before, I'm not the biggest fan of Brazil and y'all can quote me on that. Mm. And I don't hate Brazil. There's a yeah. lot I like about it, but it's not one of my top 10 places, not even close. Yeah. Uh, but the reason why a lot of black Americans do gravitate to Brazil is mm. for many reasons. So I can break it down. Uh, the warmth, number one. Brazilian people are very, very warm. Mm -hmm. And this is guys and girls, you know. It's yeah. a very sociable culture. And in the States, a lot of people have lost that you know people um, they walk around with tunnel vision they stare down at their phones mm. they you know they don't want to start conversation with strangers depending on what part of the country you're in but in Brazil it is it's in their DNA to be mm. social to be hospitable like Americans we're loud they're loud oh, we have yeah. a lot of energy they have a lot of energy True. we like to dance and be musical and rap and stuff they like all mm. of that same stuff too 
So I feel like there is uh, that connection. Yeah. And beyond that, the fact that they're melanated people. Of course, mm -hmm. they come in every shade you can imagine. You've got your blonde eye, the blonde hair, blue eye Germans, uh, yeah. Germans, German <laughs> descent Brazilians. <laughs> Portuguese. And then you've also got like, you know, the darkest Senegalese looking Brazilians. And then uh -huh. you have everything in between, in right? Between, yeah. So because of that, it kind of reminds us of the States too, is like oh, almost anyone can fit in there. Uh -huh. Yeah, anyone can fit in there. So whether you look like me, whether you look like um, anybody, like I said, you look like Justin Bieber, you could be Brazilian. I could be Brazilian. You could be Brazilian. It's one of those things. So because of that, you feel like you can, um, you can blend in and... And it's just a vibe, too. Uh, you know, there's been many books written about it, many songs written about it, but there's a Brazilian vibe that yeah. you can't find anywhere else in the world. I've been all over right now. I'm at about 70 countries. Yeah. So probably by the time I finish with Africa, it'll be like 90 countries. Yeah. But there's nothing like the Brazilian vibe, uh -huh. especially Rio. Rio has a magical kind of a vibe. Um, it's warm almost the entire year. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the women food, are beautiful. Yeah, the beaches, the women. Uh, <laughs> it's very special. So I can I, I understand the appeal of Brazil, uh -huh. but there's a whole another side of that as well. Okay, so which African countries would you recommend to black men who've never visited Africa before? Okay, that's a very good question. Yeah. So if you're a black American uh, or black man, you could be Canadian, British, whatever and you've never been to Africa before, and you only speak English, I would say it would make a lot of sense to start off in the English-speaking countries. So, I would say first country, you could do Ghana, you could do Kenya, and you could do South Africa. Now, I haven't been to South Africa yet. You've been to Ghana? I passed through, no, I haven't been to Ghana either. I passed through <laughs> Joburg, the airport, but that's it. But I've heard so many things about uh, South Africa yeah. that I'm going to go there. So that's coming up on the channel as well. But based on other black Americans that I've met, you know, they say pretty much you can't go wrong with those because yeah. the communication is going to be there. Mm. The, the infrastructure is going to be there. Things work the same way they do in Kenya. So I think those would be the three main ones, Kenya, Ghana, Kenya, better. and South Africa. If I had to throw a fourth one, yes. fourth one in there, I would say Rwanda. Rwanda. Rwanda is another yeah, one. Yeah, Rwanda is really nice. Yeah, it's very clean, but it's very I've safe. I've been to Rwanda. You have? Yeah, so... Oh, that's right, I saw one of your yeah, thumbnails on Yeah, there. I've been to Rwanda, but uh, you know they don't have Uber, they have like no. an equivalent to Uber. Yeah. So maybe rent a car when you're in, in Rwanda, because yeah. their drivers don't know... Yeah, I'm going to talk about that on my channel. There are know. some things like, about I Rwanda that, that... I've talked about it. They, they are not like <laughs> the map, and it's really well like... The, the roads are really well, like, there's street roads. Yeah, yeah they're very they're, organized. Yeah, they're very organized. But it's a very hilly city, very it's hilly. It's very beautiful, too, yeah. and safe and clean. Yeah. Yeah. How's the nightlife here? Oh, you've been to nightlife here? A little bit, a little bit. Um, from what I've seen, it's a vibe. It's very fun. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're used to clubs in the States or whatever, mm. you're going to fit right in here. You mm -hmm. can bring that same energy, you can bring that same riz out here. And they're mm -hmm. gonna love it. What, Trust me, they're gonna love it. What what music like they play here and there? Is, is so similar? they play they play hip hop here. They play Afro beats mixed in. I think that's mainly what I heard. I heard some Latin music too. I went to yeah. one spot. They did a Latin night, so you'll hear some yeah. some bachata, some salsa. Yeah. So if you like to get down with those dances, you can find that scene here as well. Mm -hmm. Would you love to live here? I'm considering it. There's a lot of things that. Uh, right that make it appeal to people. I see why uh, other YouTubers coming from the States have, have said really good things about Kenya. I can yeah. see it already, like what the, the quality of life is like here. Yeah, even people who, who've lived in Ghana, Black America, they are yeah. relocating to Kenya. You know I'm just some. telling you. Really? Okay. Yes. They prefer Kenya. I haven't been to Ghana yet, so I can't, I so can't really speak on it. Those who have been to Ghana, I can see it. I'm going to guess that the people are going to be mad. That <laughs> <laughs> You're about to start a flame war in here. <laughs> what is your experience with dating as a traveler? How do you sustain a relationship while traveling? So that's a very good question as well. I've been saying that about all her questions. Her questions have been fire. Like, you can tell she's prepared. Certain YouTubers, you sit down with them and they just, uh, um, so, by the way, like, nah, she like, da-da, da-da, da-da. No, I was da, actually, da. that's why I sent them to you to, to see if 
Okay. No, 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 I sent them to you now. She, she didn't send them to me. See, so I, I saw them like two now. seconds ago, two right seconds. before we started recording. Yes. I saw them. But, <laughs> so you said, what was, what? you said, what's it like dating on the road, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, it all depends because yeah. every culture is a little bit different, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, you consider the fact that I'm staying in places for different amounts of time. Like yeah, some yeah. places I, I might only be there for 10 days. Other places I could stay for several months. Yeah. So be, because of that, that's going to affect the way that things are going to proceed. Yeah. And I've stated before that borders are not a impediment to having a relationship. Mm. So I've had relationships already that have crossed borders before. Mm. So you can look at it like that. Mm -hmm. how, how long have you sustained them? Like the duration? It varies. It, it varies. varies, yeah. So it really depends how strong the bond is. It could be like the any longest. other relationship. It could be six months, it could be a year. One year. Yeah, it just really depends. The longest? A year. Okay. So, do you know Austin? Yeah, I actually met him here. I met uh, him here in Nairobi uh, the other night. What's your honest a, opinion about him and the content he creates? So Austin is a young guy, right? Yes. He left the States early. Like yeah. me, I left many years later than him. So I feel like on some level, maybe he should have spent a little bit more time in the States. So that way his opinion would be more well-rounded. Oh, okay. That's what I'll say. So he didn't have enough dating experience because he talks a lot about dating. So he does. It, yeah. he, did, he, he did have like a lot of dating experience in America. I did, absolutely. Like him, like him. So that's the thing, like I said, he's a very young guy, so, so I don't think he had as much experience. Yeah, because he actually compares dating experience from America and yeah, here he does. and Brazil. Yeah, yeah. that's right, that's okay. right. Yeah, I mean, like I, I mean, he's his own man. He speaks a lot about how he feels, so I can't really say too much on it because every man's experience is different. But when I met him, he was having a great time in the club here. He was enjoying Kenya. Um, yeah. And I, that's pretty much all I can say about that. Um, yeah, we love Austin, yeah. My, my experiences have been, um, like I said, quite different than his because mm. if I, I might be mistaken, but he mainly lived in Texas in the States. Mm. So that's where most of his experience is coming from as far as dating American women. And mm. I lived on the East Coast, you know, like yeah. New Jersey, Philadelphia area. I lived in... Oh, you uh, lived in New Jersey? Yeah. I lived also in Texas. So I know what, what it's like dating in Dallas. I lived in California. I lived mm. in Los Angeles. I lived in Las Vegas. So I can speak to pretty much the entire country when it mm -hmm. comes to dating versus just like one state. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's your thoughts with how he dates women on his channel? Sorry? How, what's your thought about how he dates women on his channel? So I don't follow everything that he does. Okay. So I don't so know everything, let's but that. yeah, yeah. I, I can't say too much about it. <laughs> But I know he loves Kenya. That's all yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, he loves been, Kenya. He's been saying he loves Kenya. Yes. Mm. Okay, what's the dating culture experience in America currently? <laughs> so I haven't lived in America in many years. So, so Austin knows more about like 2022 America than I do. Because <laughs> I, you know, I, I wasn't there. The whole 2022, there. I wasn't so you've there. So been, you've been out of America like over 10 years? No, not 10 years. Not that long. But okay. I've been out several years. Several so years. So I can just say when I left. Okay. When I, when I left, um, <laughs> the, the culture is, is, it's definitely got issues. That, that part I can co-sign. You know, the, the guys who, they say, you know, these girls, um, they're unrealistic. Mm -hmm. They... Um, you know, they all think that they're celebrities in their head, these kinds of things. Yes, I, I can agree with that. Uh -huh. um, I think there is a big gender war in the States right now between men and women. Not only black men and women, also um, other nationalities because yeah. I have friends all across the, the, the spectrum and they, they live in the States now. And we have those conversations all the time. Doesn't matter whether, whether they're Latino, whether they're white awesome. or anything else. Uh, it's, there's a big cultural shift in the States. I don't know how much you know about it, like based on YouTube and stuff. Uh, uh, like, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys talk a lot because, uh, how can I say? I came about Passport Bros this year. Sure. So I started like, like Getting just put Passport Bros because I was like, what is Passport Bros? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I, 
people talk a lot of different things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question now for the first time. <laughs> so what would you say about the dating culture here in Kenya? How is in that? Kenya, it's actually different from what I see people say it's happening right now. Like um, people people here are more are still more feminine. Like yes. if you're dating a guy and you're not even married to him, you're gonna cook for okay. him. Yeah, you're not gonna go out on dates every single day. You're gonna like it's expected. Of you to cook. <laughs> That's good. See, that doesn't yes. happen in the states anymore. And it's not like because I cook, even if I don't have a boyfriend, I cook for myself, sure. right? So it's the same thing. I cook for someone I care. And for. It's the same. Your friends are the yes, same way. Yes, I cook, I cook for, for my friends. Guys. My, like even if you are visit, if I invited you home, I have to cook for you. You can't go without having a meal. Sure. It's like cultural. Yeah, absolutely. Expected. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I feel like in the states, a lot of guys. I've never even experienced that. Like they've never even <laughs> like it's a concept that doesn't compute. It's something maybe they saw in a movie from <laughs> 20, 30 years ago. But you can even, you wash even their clothes. Okay, yeah. And even living with your boyfriend, you wash his clothes. Okay, yeah. You see, go to his home and wash. That doesn't his really clothes. exist in the states anymore. <laughs> That's a long time ago. But we also have our hurdles too. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So there's another thing. Uh, I see like parcel bros come, uh, they, they relocate, like they travel for love uh -huh. and other things. I'm going to yeah. co concentrate on the love part. Sure. So one thing is that like people will always advise them not to take the woman from the <laughs> foreign country yes. back to the state because they're going to assimilate exactly. to American yes. way of life. Yeah. Do you think that's true? Absolutely. So how they, like how will they maintain? Uh, you know, their there's there's a saying that water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna visualize this for you guys right now. There's a saying that water takes the shape of its container, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you know who the water is in this analogy, and you know what the container is. The container is the United States. Yes. So when you take the water, which would be the woman, and you put her into the into the states, she's going to take the shape of the container. She doesn't. She almost doesn't have a choice. Yeah. You know, you could fight it to to some degree, but over time, it's going to rub off on you. So because of that, many guys uh, recommend against that. So what's the long term solution? They're going to relocate to the country. Yes, I I think for a lot of guys it makes sense uh, if they're looking for a wife they're looking for a long-term partner mm -hmm. and they have a lot of complaints about the way that things work in America mm -hmm. then it would make sense if they're gonna find a woman from Kenya from Brazil from wherever to re relocate there or mm -hmm. if not there a third country that kind of has the best of both worlds yeah you know because maybe in the country that the woman comes from the infrastructure isn't as great yeah. um, but, opportunities but so, socially, it's it's good for them. Yeah. They might be able to find a place in the middle where the society is good and the infrastructure is good as well, but it's still not as, um, you know, toxic mm -hmm. or whatever word you want to use as the states. And then if they can find happiness there, then all power to them. But mm -hmm. generally, in the case where they, uh, a guy is looking for a woman who is not Americanized and he finds her somewhere else, and then he goes back to the states and thinks it's going to be exactly like wherever he found her, <laughs> That's that's kind of a ridiculous concept, uh, and I think more and more people are are moving away from that. But of course, uh, you know, it might work for some people. Mm. So, do you feel welcome here in Kenya? Yeah, I generally do. I generally feel welcome in Kenya. <laughs> I think more than my first trip. My first trip here. Uh, I wasn't as well traveled as I am now. That's part of it as well. And when you know, I'm a little bit more trip? mature, and I see things through through a different lens. Yeah. But the very first time when I came to CBD, yes. Nairobi, <laughs> I felt like I was an alien, and people were staring at me like I was an alien. Like, how, how long was it? This was five years ago. Five years ago. So you didn't see many guys with uh, with, with dreads, with rastas. Really? Yeah, five years ago. You didn't see that many Kenyans 20, with rastas. That's like 2019. Not before. 2018. 2018. 
Yeah, yeah 2018. Oh, yeah. yeah or maybe they're looking at you because you're, like, attractive. Because that, so that could be part of it, too. Oh, but, uh, right. but, you know, now, like, you got J. Cole, you got Kendrick, you got yeah. all these artists. Like, you know, it's more of a like style thing now. Yeah. Everywhere. Even anywhere in the world. someone here with hard dread. Yeah. It's much more common than it was yeah. even five years ago. So, yeah. I don't know if it's just the hair, but, yeah, I was getting stared at a whole <laughs> lot like here. Like cold stairs. Crazy stairs. And so people left me comments under my video when they said, you uh -huh. know, back in the day there used to be a gang. Oh, yeah. And they used to have dreads. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, in the 90s or something like well, that. Why? They still like this. Okay, really? No, no I'm asking you uh, five years ago, why are dreads like this? I mean, they were shorter, but they well, were, shorter. it was long. I had long hair oh, okay. even then. I mean, it was maybe up more, like but it, it was, was like more. twisted. Oh, yeah, they were, oh, it was already twisted. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because of that gang. Yeah. They have. So I didn't know that at the time. So when I was walking around, I was just like, man, people in, in <laughs> Kenya, they don't like me. You? Like, why don't they like oh, me? Because no. I just come from Kampala and I didn't, it was a different didn't energy. Nobody was giving me that same kind of energy. So. Like every part of Nairobi when you're walking, they all stare at you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How's the weather here? The weather has been everything <laughs> since I've been here. <laughs> I've only been in Nairobi now for about 10 days, and I've seen it rain. I think it rained three days. It was very hot one day, and then it, then it got cold in a second. So the building I'm standing has a swimming pool. So it was hot and sunny, and I was like, yeah, took my shirt off, you know, showing the abs. And I was like, I'm about to go swim. Everybody's going to be at the pool. As soon as I get to the pool, it's rain. clouds come. <laughs> and it gets cold then the wind came and I'm just like I come out of the pool like freezing it's I'm like, how did it happen so quick it's it wasn't even like 30 minutes it changed that quick so long story short if you're coming to Nairobi uh -huh. prepare yourself for any kind of weather yeah. you want to make sure you have a, a jacket you want to make sure you have sweaters you want to make sure you have um, you know a little you, you want to have options you want to have things and maybe an umbrella as well yeah yep have you been to the mall? Have I been to the mall? Uh, yeah, I actually went to Two Rivers the other yeah. day. I was blown away, guys. I'm going to show you in a video, but yeah. Two Rivers is amazing. Not amazing for Kenya, not amazing for Africa. Really? It's just amazing. Really? Yeah, Two Rivers is Have really nice. Have you been nice. to it's Village new. Market? It's new, right? Yeah, it's new. Like, the, it's not like really new. It's no. already five years. When I was here last time, it wasn't finished. It wasn't open. Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't open then. So it's, it's new to me. So yeah, in five years it's new. Yeah, it wasn't here when I was here last time. Have you been to Village Market because it's near Village there. Market. Now I think, that's I, think I drove fair. past it, but yeah. I didn't go. Now that's, that's the newest the, one? No, it's the oldest one, but okay. they like added a new... They remodeled like, it. Yeah, they did some and then it has expansion. Like, every single thing. It has the best restaurants. Okay, I'll check it the out. The best vibe. What's the standard of living? What's the standard of living here? So the standard of living here. Yeah, and the cost. You know what? <laughs> can I pause it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I pause it? Yeah. Because we can move over there. Okay. okay. All right. Should I should I put it closer? Nah, this is good because we don't want to cut my head off. So this is perfect. Okay. Good. All right. Where are we? By uh, the cost of living. Okay, the cost of living here is very, very reasonable. So I'm in a very nice two-bedroom apartment, two-bedroom, three bathrooms, yeah. right? Huge place, huge terrace, mm -hmm. and one of the best neighborhoods in the city. And a, an apartment like this in the States, yeah. you would pay four times the price. Uh -huh. You would pay almost four times. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted a place like this in Chicago or Miami or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the prices here are very reasonable. If you're coming from a Western country, you are gonna be very comfortable here. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you have to sacrifice anything when it comes to your standard of living here versus the States. Yeah. I think the average meal in a restaurant is somewhere around $10. Mm -hmm. Could be less, could be more, depending on what you're eating. Yeah. And Ubers are very cheap, 2 or $3 for most trips around the city, unless you're going way across town. It's going to be enough. Even if you're going way across town, it's like $10. Yeah, even less, I think. Yeah. I mean, maybe $7, $7, yeah, $7.50, yeah. something mm -hmm. like that. I don't think I've spent $10 yet. 
And yeah. I've, I've been all over the city. Like I went from my, where I stay all the way to Eastley, all the way to Two Rivers. Oh, you've been to Eastley? Yeah, we were in Eastley yesterday, me and another uh, content creator. Nice. Yeah, so look for that video too. It, it's going to nice. be something nobody else is showing you guys when they come <laughs> to the city. Nobody <laughs> dares go to Eastley, but I went. So. so yeah, like I was telling you about the head wraps. I was like, Capricorn, will, will you make it to down? <laughs> so if you've made it to Italy, you make, you'll definitely make it to downtown. What do you think of brothers who travel to Thailand, <laughs> DR, Colombia, and North Africa? Okay, all right. So <laughs> you're trying to get me in trouble out here. She's trying to go viral. She's going to get that clip. All right. So I think. A lot of the brothers who go to uh, those kind of spots you mentioned in Latin America and Thailand as well. Uh, for Latin America, I think a lot of it is access, right? Because mm -hmm. most of those countries are in the same time zone as the states. Yeah. So if you live in New York, you live in Chicago, mm -hmm. you can often work um, those same office hours oh, from okay. those countries. You know, so that that's a benefit you don't have almost anywhere else in the world. I could be. Uh, in the office at 3 p.m. in Columbia time and also 3 p.m. New York time. So uh, because of that and the cheap flights, there are lots of low-cost carriers from the States. So uh, long story short, it's access. So I think a lot of the fact that DR and Colombia and Brazil uh, are very, very popular with a certain segment of black men is obviously the women, the, the treatment, the weather, the vibes, but also the access. Now, if Africa was as close as Colombia, then if they weren't going, you can make a, a much stronger argument that they're like anti-black and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I think it's honestly a case-by-case -case basis. So, like but, I said, access is a lot of it because but, the price to get from, uh, let's Asia. say, Atlanta uh -huh. to, um, to DR or whatever else, Colombia, versus yeah. the price to get from Atlanta to Nairobi yeah. is often, there's a big difference. But I know you're going to throw in, but what about Asia? What yeah, about, Asia? about okay. Philippines so, and Spa. <laughs> I don't think there's ma as many uh, black men. I don't think there's as many black men as Asia as the internet might make it seem like. Uh, Unless it's really changed, because I've been to Asia several times, yeah. and I didn't see that many. Maybe it's changed in the last year or two, and there's a whole like new generation who are going. Mm -hmm. But when I was there, they, we were few and far between. It's not like in Colombia where you know mm -hmm. we're everywhere or <clears throat> DR where we're everywhere so mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty much how I look at it mm -hmm. uh, some of those folks they're just kind of locked into one thing and that's yeah. all that they want to see and you know if that works for them you know what I mean who am I to tell them what to do I'm not paying for the <laughs> ticket right yeah but um, I, I do challenge some of them the ones who are a little more uh, adventurous the ones who want to see something different mm -hmm. to step to step outside of that comfort zone yeah. and when you get a chance when you get your money up when you get your savings up uh, when you have your you know your a little bit more time freedom away from work yeah. to to take that leap and check out uh, some places in Africa because there's no place that's going to treat you like the motherland is and I didn't get cheap actually there's Sorry. a feeling that you you just don't have it anywhere else I've been to almost every Afro Latin community that you can name mm -hmm. and it's not the same as being in Africa. Mm. So what, what advice would you give people who want to come visit the motherland and connect with their people? I think you say I would just say uh, <laughs> to add on to what I just said yeah. was don't just think about it do it. Like Nike says just do it. There's nothing that's holding you back. There's never been a better time to come and it's never been easier. 90% of the visas that you might need for African countries, you can do it online and usually less than 24 hours, very simple. You take a picture of yourself maybe, you might need to scan your passport yeah. and just put in your details of where you're staying. You'll get an email a couple hours later and you're good to go. Yeah. It's never been that easy before. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep up? So you know like the culture, <laughs> The cultures we are different, like culture, the way we grew up and the way our Black Americans grew up. So how do if like a Kenyan man is dating a Black man, <laughs> how do you? Keep... You mean a Kenyan man is dating a Black no, no, woman? No, no, no. Sorry, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Like that's another topic. Kenya, that's a whole Ken, other channel. A Kenyan woman is <laughs> dating a Black man. <laughs> I don't know about that. One. <laughs> a Kenyan woman is dating a Black man. What should like the like? What keeps a black man like? Locked? Okay, 
So one thing I want to say, yeah. this isn't just to Kenyan women, but I'm saying to all African women or any women listening is, do not assume that because we're black Americans, we like to hear the N-word. Oh, or no, we yeah. use the N-word because True. there's a lot of black Americans who don't use that word. Yeah. And you might run into someone from a different culture and they like black American culture from TV. And they yeah. want to run up to you, hey, what's up, my, my and you know, or they want to keep dropping it all the time. Yes. Now, of course, you know, I would never tell a black person that they can't use that word, but don't use it just because you're around me and don't assume that I use it or that I feel comfortable with that word. Yeah. Um, I think you have to understand that that word has a certain context in America mm. versus what it has to the rest of the world. The rest of the world, they hear it in party songs for the yeah, most part, you know? Songs, and so like, they, they see it like through one lens, but it means something completely different to us. Yeah. And you know, I have family members who they, they use that word every five seconds, right? And I accept that and I understand it because of the context of the states. Um, but one nice thing for me when I travel is I don't have to hear that word when I leave, you know? And it's nice to, to not be reminded of like yeah. the, the racism and the stress in the states. And when I hear it here, it's all, it, it, it triggers that. It brings me back to that. And I'm like, ah, you know, why, why do I have to hear that? So, yeah, don't assume that we, we use the N-word. Some of us do, of course, but all of us don't. Yeah. Um, I would say beyond that, try to, try to be patient. Try yeah. to be understanding yeah. uh, about cultural differences because they will crop up over time. I would say enjoy yourself, have fun, relax, try to learn something. Uh, you should be teaching them and they should be teaching you. It should be, it shouldn't be a one-way street. It should be both ways, you know? Yeah. You, can, you can teach him some Swahili if you're Kenyan or whatever culture you're coming from. <laughs> and you know him, he can, he can bust down some, uh, some of our slang because y'all think y'all know all our slang, but y'all don't know all teach of it. Teach us something. And some of y'all, y'all be getting it wrong sometimes, so. <laughs> Can you teach us one slang? Oh man, you put, that me, was you put me on the spot now. You put me on the one spot. One that you definitely don't know. Oh man, one that you definitely don't know. Yeah. Um, man, there's so, there's so many different ones. And some of it's regional too. Like in one part of the States, like like if you're coming yeah, from the West Coast, we might say Hella, right? Hella. Uh -huh. That's a very West Coast thing. Uh -huh. So if you're from New York, you wouldn't say Hella. You've heard Hella before, right? Or no? No. So, uh, so oh, I'll give you an example. So. You uh -huh. might go to a party with your friends and be like, yeah. man, last night, mm -hmm. it was hella people at the party. Oh. That's something they only say in the West Coast. Like, uh. if you come from New York, you would, you would never say hella. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's things in the New York, in New York no. culture that they would say that they wouldn't say in the West. Mm -hmm. And in the South, like things in Atlanta that they would say. Mm -hmm. But with TikTok and with so much media, <laughs> it's, it's starting to become much more standardized. You know what I know? <laughs> What's that? Sneaky link. <laughs> Sneaky link, okay. Yes. Is it a slang? <laughs> yeah, that what is What does it mean? You tell them, tell them what you think it means. <laughs> now you guys go and Google it. <laughs> okay. Right. So, uh, no, no, no. Do you get the value of your money traveling within Africa? <laughs> that depends on the country. Because again, Africa is not a country, it's a continent. Yeah. So things vary greatly. Uh, mm -hmm. when you cross a border. So yeah. I would say in Kenya, yeah. I felt, especially on this trip, less so on the last trip, but on this trip for sure, I feel like you get very good value for money here. Yeah, and the flight tickets, you find like the flight ticket within like Rwanda to Nairobi, was it high? So I didn't fly. Oh, okay. Actually, came, I, I came over land. Which, which bus did you use? Oh man, oh. You're gonna like traumatize me. I'm gonna go back to that. You know, I, so I used a, Modern Coast, and it was why horrible. did you watch, why did you not watch my video? I said Modern Coast was terrible. It, it used to be good though. Was it yes. used to be good? It used so to be five good. years ago, when I yes. did my first trip, I it on my video, good. I I like gave them props. I was like, yo, yes. Modern Coast Same. is very good. <laughs> and then I came and I'm like, yo, what happened? <laughs> the pandemic yes. killed their business because it was Our, so bad. One so day bad. trip the only took good three thing, days. Sorry? One day trip took three days. I, I going went where? Where were you going? I went from Nairobi to Rwanda by bus with Modern Coast. It took three days? Yes. Oh my god. Because of the border. It wasn't even about the roads. Which border? It was, was it the the, the Uganda Rwanda? border and the Rwanda border both, that both, both corrupt. Wow. Yes. Wow. So my, my my situation wasn't that bad. The one good thing I will say about Modern Coast when I just took it was that it was not full. So I did have space. That was the only oh, good yes. thing. Everything else was like True. horrible. <laughs> like they sold me a VIP seat 
and they did it not have a VIP, VIP seat. seat. It was a regular Dang. ass seat. <laughs> and she was almost falling down. Yeah. Then, like, if you if you are watching it, this maybe yes. you, uh, they bought Trinity bus because everyone is saying anything but modern coast. I don't see how yes. you could be worse than modern coast. Yeah. So there's a stereotype that African women are poor. <laughs> they don't look very nice. There's no diversity here. Could you tell them uh, the truth and what you are the, now that you are like here? Okay. So to address the first one, you said African women are <laughs> poor. poor. So Africa, Kenya, <laughs> like anywhere else, has uh, has yeah, classes, yeah. has social levels, and income levels. So you do have very poor women, just like you have very poor women in, women in Baltimore or Louisiana or Alabama. You have very rich women, just like you do in Beverly Hills or South Beach, Miami, or Manhattan. And you have everything in between. Yeah. And that's been my experience all across Africa. I've dealt with women who, their families have way more money than my family, way more. I'm talking about they have private drivers, they have multiple homes, they have a vacation home, and I've dated women like this in Africa, you know. So don't just feed into stereotypes. You're going to get in where you fit in. If you're a lower class person and you're poor, you're going to deal with probably poor lower class women. If you are better than that, then you're going to deal with whatever level you're at. So mm -hmm. just look at it like that. It, it depends more about you than, um, than the country overall. Yeah. That's what I would look at first. Yeah. And to say they're unattractive is ridiculous because every race on the, on the face of the earth comes from Africa, right? Yeah. Every facial feature, every kind of nose you can imagine, wide, small, pointy, in, in the middle, exists somewhere on the continent. Yeah. I guarantee you. And every skin tone you can imagine and see on earth exists on the continent. And yeah. I could go on and on and on with cheekbones, facial structures, all of that. Yeah. Everything is here. So... Don't think that African women look one way. There's so many different ways they can look, mm -hmm. so many different uh, you know, vibes they can have, attitudes. So mm -hmm. just realize that it's a variety here. It's not a monolith, it's not one thing. So Africans, do you think Africans are highly influenced by black American culture? I think the whole world is heavily influenced by black American culture. That's true. Now, how, how far does that relate to Africans? I would say that in my experience, because I'm only speaking about East Africa. I yes. haven't been to West Africa yet. Surprisingly, uh -huh. not yet. I'm going to go. Yes. East Africans, from what I've seen, are very into reggae culture, surprisingly. I was very surprised. <laughs> they like reggae a lot out here. Yes. They like dance hall. They like a lot of Jamaican artists. They also like a lot of Afrobeats artists. You'll hear a lot of Nigerian music. And they also have the local music scene. So whether you're in Kenya, that's gonna be Kenyan music. Whether you're in Rwanda, they have their local Rwandan artists that, that uh, do music in Kenya, Rwanda. Yeah. So yes, black Americans are known. Our artists are, are popular all over the globe, including Africa. Mm -hmm. But they also do have um, you know regional cultures and regional differences. So I feel like if you come to the continent, especially East Africa, you're going to hear music that you know, and you're also going to hear music that you don't know. And you're going to see styles and, you know, ways of dressing and, and swag and riz and everything mm -hmm. uh, from the States. But then you're also going to say some stuff that, like, they put an African twist on it. They do their own kind of uh, addition to it. But, you know, it's all love. It's all a, um, you know, uh, an exchange. Yeah. So Brazilian. <laughs> You need Brazil questions. Brazilian I haven't been to Brazil in years, but go ahead. Brazilian women, compared with African women, uh, like compared like cultural belonging, uh, 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 can you say like Afro-Brazilians are authentically Africans, like here? <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Uh, I said earlier, I try not to answer questions that I don't know much about. Now, I have been to Salvador, Bahia, but it was a while ago, right? It was, it was quite a while ago. So, from what I've heard, yeah. Afro-Brazilians are, are getting more woke than they were when I went. You know, mm -hmm. So, a lot of them, not to say they didn't embrace their roots before, but they're, they're doing it a lot more. So, I think that the, the strongest African presence that you're going to feel in the Americas, and when I say the Americas, I mean from Canada all the way down to Argentina, 
is probably going to be in Salvador Bahia. But at the same time, it falls short of real Africa because 99% of them, they're still speaking Portuguese. They're, they're not going to have a tribal language. Maybe a few, but it's a very small percentage. And they have a lot of them have never been on African soil. So I'm trying to think of a good analogy, but it's almost like that game where you're with a friend, you know, you're in a classroom and yeah. you have a message, right? Yeah. And you whisper it down to one person's ear and they whisper it to the next person's ear. Even if you get that message, it's going to be a little diluted and scrambled from like what the original message was. So to put it uh, in other terms, Africa is that original message and then Brazil is maybe the second guy in that chain. So yeah. it's still not quite the same. Do you have any horror or uncomfortable situation experiences when you travel? <laughs> <laughs> Have I had any horrible yes. uh, situations when I traveled? So, yeah. when I was crossing, well, I was already inside the country. I wasn't at the border. Mm. But I was in Guatemala, which is a small country in Central America. Yeah. It's right underneath Mexico. It's the next country. Yeah. I was riding in um, kind of like a matatu, like a little van that they use for transportation. But this is in the middle of nowhere. When I yeah. say the middle of nowhere, I mean... I could scream and no one would hear me like yeah. in, in the middle of nothing like there was a mountain and that's <laughs> it and randomly there was a stop like a checkpoint yeah. and there were police officers so they stopped the thing and they made me get out I was the only black person the only one everyone else was a local they made uh -huh. me get out and the van and the van left uh -huh. middle of nowhere me and what? these two officers on the road just us and it's super awkward and they're looking at me and they're like, um, you know, do you have anything for us? What? And, and I'm just sitting there. And this is all in Spanish, too. They don't speak English. Do you speak Spanish? I do, yeah. yeah. But they didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but they're asking me, they're like, yeah, you know, do you have something for us? And I'm just kind of like, I don't understand. I'm just like playing stu super stupid. Like, I'm the dumbass tourist. And, and they're just kind of like... And it's so awkward because there's no one to rescue me, you know? There's, yeah. no, there's no witnesses, there's nobody who can film. Mm. Uh, I could disappear, I could die in the middle of this thing. Uh, and so we're just sitting there and they're like, they're still trying, they're trying different ways to try to get money from me. And like I said, I'm just like playing poker face. Like I'm playing like stupid tours. <laughs> I'm not like refusing, I'm just acting stupid. Like you don't right? know what that means. And yeah. so probably 30 minutes rides goes by and then another van goes by and they just like, okay, you can get in this one or oh, whatever. And I didn't have to pay again. They told him. They were like, yeah, it's oh, okay. Definitely. Thank God. Ah, yeah. So that was that was a very terrifying. uncomfortable because experience. Because you don't, you don't even know if they are truly policemen. No. It could have been anything. But, you yeah. know, thank God I was okay. Hmm. I have more, but that's the first one that came to mind. So what did you think before coming to Africa? Like, what's so unique about African women? <laughs> <laughs> What's so unique about African women? Yeah. She can't even say it without laughing. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to. So, <laughs> so first off, I want to say I didn't come to Africa only for women. <laughs> it's a nice bonus, right? Yes. It's nice to go somewhere where the women are pleasant or um, where I feel like I can, have, I can have a connection with them. But I've traveled to many places where <laughs> I... I I did not connect with any women, and I didn't even really have any conversations which those, with them. Which, which are so, I mean, I guess this is Africa too. Where? <laughs> Technically, I was in Egypt, uh, and but Egypt don't Egypt. I can say that Egypt people don't consider themselves. Exactly, Africans. that's why I said. That's I why I said. It. <laughs> I didn't want to know if I should count Egypt that, but and I'm just using that for an example. Of like, that's <laughs> yeah. a place where like the furthest thing from my mind was women when I went to Egypt. Like, I went there saying I want to see the pyramids, I want to ride a camel. Do you know Sudan has pyramids? Yeah, they and do. Of course, they, that's where the original... The original, absolutely. Yes. You can see the smaller ones and how they like progressed. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, but that's like a whole other deep thing. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I went there specifically for the culture. Yeah. I can give you another place that's definitely not in Africa. There's a country called Georgia. There's a state in the U.S. called Georgia, like Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, but it's But there's Georgia. also a whole country called Georgia. Yeah in Europe. Uh -huh. It's in Eastern Europe. And this country, the culture there is very strong. They have really good food, really good Excuse. wine, mm -hmm. really, uh, the people are it's like, a really low cost of living. Yeah. Yeah. So the people are like black, like they're, they're dark skin or? They're tan. 
that so time. if you think of an Italian, oh, they're yeah, like yeah. dark Italians, yes. like darker than that. Yeah. Yeah. So like they black hair, jet, jet black hair, oh. like a little bit of a tan. Yeah, Some of yeah. them, ha I mean, there's different shades, but you yeah. know, they're darker white people basically. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I went to that country. Uh, women were the furthest thing from my mind. I know it was very conservative and I spent yeah. a whole month there. So yeah. if, it, if I was only traveling for women, I would avoid that. I would just go to DR if that was the <laughs> case. I would just go to any of these other places that are known for women. So no, um, <laughs> what was the question again? Did I answer it? Oh, what's so unique about Africa? Oh, what's so unique about African women? Oh, yeah. yes. So I was saying I don't travel only for women, but um, African women are unique because they, they have a certain quiet confidence that mm. is rare to find. A lot of women in the West will say they're confident or whatever, but they're loud. You know, it's not a, a feminine type of confidence. There's another kind of confidence that you can have where it's... Uh, Consuming. Exactly, where it's very classy and you can't, you can't help but respect it when you see it. You know, um, you know whether you're um, interacting with them in a romantic way or just in a, in a friend capacity or you know any other capacity that you can imagine, uh, it's something that it's it's very dignified. I I don't know exactly how to say it, but I think you can get an idea of what I'm trying to express here. And I think that is very unique uh, about the African woman. Okay. Now, I'm trying to think what else I can say. I've noticed that I'm speaking for East Africa now. I haven't been in West Africa. Is that um, they tend to be traditional, but not close-minded. So. If they're religious, if they're you know Muslim, Christian, or whatever, they actually uh, have connections to that uh, faith. You can actually feel it, but at the same time, they are not uh, only looking at the world through that one lens, and they're able to interact with people who may not share that exact same faith. That's one thing that I've noticed um, mm -hmm. is a bit unique. Yeah. There's a question I wanted to ask, I've forgotten. So you say like you've moved out of America totally, or you're just traveling? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah you've that's, moved. that's accurate. Yeah, I'm outside of America for now, well, why, that's correct. Why did you, why did you move? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a deep question. We could do like an hour just on that, man. Um, so I've always liked to travel, right? Yeah. But you can only do so much if you're taking short trips. So if I was just to live in the States and I was going to do two weeks here, two weeks, two weeks there, two weeks there, it takes forever to nah. to see a lot of stuff. And then beyond that, it's you feel rushed, you know? So if I wanted to come to the continent, to Africa, and I wanted to see Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda, mm -hmm. you can't do that in two weeks. You yeah. could, but you would, you would miss so nah. much. Yeah. And you, I mean, you would be half asleep most of the time. I mean... Yeah, it, it's not the way you want to do it, and you wouldn't take take it as much away from it as far yeah. as experiences. So, <laughs> since I've always wanted to travel and always see the world, I didn't want to just be a tourist. I wanted to be a traveler, and oh, there's a difference yeah, between being a, a tourist and a traveler. And I also wanted to experience what daily life is like, uh, not just the highlights. Not the so, touristic places only. So yeah, before I came to Africa, I lived in Europe for some time, not just visited, I actually lived there. You know, I had an ID card in Europe. Yeah. And I did the same thing in South America. So I just always felt like the world is too big to just be like, okay, I was born here. I'm gonna live here, and I'm gonna die here. Like, we only have so, ma so much time on this earth. Like, I wanna see as much as I can, experience as much as I can. And America has a lot to offer, but yeah. it doesn't offer everything. What's the difference between Europe Sir? What's the difference between Europe and Africa? <laughs> I knew you were going to say you it. Knew it. <laughs> oh my God. So, so different. So, okay, this is one thing I can, I can talk about is in Europe, my experiences, Africans act completely different in Europe than they act in Africa. And also Africans in America, America act Africa. completely different than they do in, yeah. in Africa. Oh. So... So they assimilate to the culture 
there, like African. Yeah, a lot of them. You have wow. these Afropeans, and I don't mean the <laughs> Africans who were born there. Because no. I, I understand it's different if, like, you know, your mom was a French African yeah, and you were born in Paris. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a different thing. But I'm talking about the people who were born somewhere on the continent and then they moved to Europe when they're 21, 22, 25, you know, and on and on and on. I feel like those folks, their energy is very different from what I get when I'm here on the continent. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this. Do you consider yourself passport, bro? <laughs> I want to get this question on every interview. <laughs> Jonita asked me this yeah. on Kenyanda. Yeah. And I, I'm going to give you the same answer. Do you, do, do you drop girlfriends everywhere? <laughs> like, when you have a Kenyan girlfriend, if you're young, that question is very interesting. Well, you asked me earlier about, like, <laughs> no, no, what is it like traveling and dating? So I, yeah, think, I so, feel like I answered yeah. that already. Mm -hmm. um, so, do I consider myself a passport bro? Mm -hmm. So, passport bro is one of those words that can mean anything to, to anyone, people. right? Yeah. So, it's kind of like the word woke. That's, that was a word that started, I don't know if you know about the word woke, right? Yeah, no, the word That word started in the black community in America, and mm -hmm. it meant specifically like being aware of racial injustice, right? Yeah. Or like knowing, uh, having knowledge of self in an yeah. African-American context, yeah. knowing your roots, knowing your history. That's what woke meant. You know, you would see a brother maybe in a university, and he's taking his first study on African culture. Cool. And you say, okay, you know, you get woke. You know, you're, you're starting to learn about your roots. That's yeah. what woke originally meant. Mm -hmm. Then white America got a hold of woke, and now woke it's means so many things. <laughs> woke means, you know, you, you call, um, you know, people who are men and they want to be women, if you call them by the right pronoun, that, that means woke. Like, woke can mean so many things now that it has no meaning. And I feel like passport bros is another word like that where Originally, it meant one thing, and now it's it can be it can be it can be demonized. It can mean um, you know someone who's just traveling and paying for women. It can mean uh, someone who hates Beautiful. Black American women. It can mean so many different things. So I try to st stay, stay away, away from, uh, from labels time. as much yeah. as possible because when the label changes and I say I'm that, then I yeah. I'm I'm going like to associate myself with whatever the change is. So no, I don't like to use that label for myself. Yeah. Um, I was traveling before there was a label called Passport Bros, and I'll be traveling when people forget about what Passport Bros means in 20 years. I'll still be traveling. That's true. So, last one. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering the questions. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last part in that, my. That was the end. That was the, yeah. The, okay, that's the signing end. out. All right. So uh, yeah, appreciate you having me on the platform. I appreciate yeah. your audience uh, yeah. for tuning in. Yeah. And if you like. Uh, some of the things that you've heard you know where to find me at yeah she's gonna put it below below and on the screen like i'm yes. making it easy for you guys yeah i mean yeah. she she knows what she's doing she's been doing this <laughs> longer than me so i don't even have to mention it you know you guys will, will know where to find me at yeah so that's all until next time this is your guy jay focus reminding you to stay, stay focused ah bye <laughs>